welcome to What's Past This Podcast. My name is Robert. I'm Damien. I'm Steve. And I'm James. And on this episode, we're going to be playing you a short audio drama that we've uh, written and performed and uh, having a little chat about it. And if that's your thing and you're watching on YouTube, why not like, comment and or subscribe? And don't forget, if you're listening to us on any other platform, hit that follow button. Yeah, James, you said, didn't you, in the little intro that we've recently recorded the uh, Mystery Murder play. We've uh, recently, meaning like one minute ago. <laughs> yeah, literally just before we started recording this. <laughs> yeah, uh, most of it was written uh, yesterday, so it is hot off the press. Oh, right. Yeah, there we go then. But we've, uh, wow. we've gone and changed some stuff. Just yes. whilst we were recording it, in fact, yes. as we were recording, we were yeah. like, oh, actually, let's change this because this is better. Oh, this yeah. sounds funny. This sounds great. This sounds... Yeah. yeah. Um, there's a few jokes that uh, is that the internet will know on there as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's, not get, let's not give them any spoilers. Yeah. <laughs> so the, uh, the premise of, of this uh, play is that it's a prequel to uh, a future project that we've got coming up with Hereafter. Um, it's that detective series we talk about probably every episode. Um, and um, <laughs> it's going to be uh, a prequel to the second episode of that series, which hasn't as yet been written, but it's in the planning stages. Um, and we're probably going to do another prequel to, to that story as well um, with uh, a couple of characters from this play being recurrent characters later on so uh, it's all part of the the patchwork as it were um <laughs> of the uh the willie and wendy stereo verse or whatever yeah. we're calling now it. you know we're doing something ladies and gentlemen mm. yeah oh, what gave you what gave you an idea to do uh, a prequel uh to those james um well, it was. It started off as a different idea. The, the place called Mystery Murder, which came. It was a bit of serendipity. I think I can't remember who it was. Um, someone. It was me. It was you. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, you uh, yeah. tried to say uh, murder mystery, and you you got the words the wrong way around and said mystery murder. And yeah. I thought. Yeah. I thought. Oh, I wonder what that would be because uh, I thought about it. I thought, well, in a murder mystery. You know who the victim is and how they died, but you don't know who the killer is or their motives. And so I thought, well, why do we flip that on head on its head? So a mystery murder would be so, well, you know the ki- who the killer is, um, and the motive, but you don't know who the victim is or how they were killed. So it started as that idea um, mm-hmm. about a guy going into a police station and confessing to a murder, and then I. Uh, kind of thought, oh, what if it was a prequel to to that other thing that we're writing? Because uh, I yeah. wanted Robert to play this particular character, so I thought, well, let's just make it the same character and and have it as a prequel. So mm. that's what that is. And uh, my character's name, Bruno Dallas. Yes. <laughs> Where did you come up with that name? <laughs> um, yeah. Well, the name doesn't actually get mentioned at all in this story, but it will later. Um, but. Uh, I was thinking about like the the kind of idea of like how quite often serial killers become kind of mythologized. They have this kind of almost celebrity status around them. Some some of them. Um, so I wanted the character to have a kind of slightly show busy kind of name because um, I thought I thought Bruno sounds quite showbiz, but then I also I thought Dallas sounds slightly kind of I don't know sort of. American and and kind of dirt, Does, like yeah. slightly dangerous or something. I don't know. I just thought it sounded cool. Uh, okay. <laughs> Comment below if you agree that sounds uh, cool. Bruno Dallas. <laughs> yeah, it reminds me of someone in the WWE. Like uh, I forgot his name. I think I think his name is something Dallas, and he's yeah. He's, well, he he used to be like uh, I believe like believe like B O L, um. But I can't remember his first name, but yeah, just remind the name reminds me of him. <laughs> oh, it's Bo Dallas. Bo Dallas, that's it. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> Hence why it'd be Bo Leaves then, I presume. <laughs> Possibly, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and the other three of us are playing. 
uh, police officers, um, one yep. of whom will will re reoccur later on. Um, so, uh, so yeah, we, I guess we'll we'll play it for you now, and we hope you enjoy it, and yep. come back afterwards, and we'll be we'll have a little chat about it. Yeah, we certainly will. Enjoy. 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 <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, hello, hello. What's all this then? Evening, sir. Evening, Tony. Harold. What time do you call this? Sorry, lads. Got caught up in some paperwork regarding the Hobson case. Is this going to court? Yes, finally. What do you reckon, Skipper? You'll get off. You think? Ah, uh, juries don't go for that kind of thing anymore. Not enough hard proof. Too much circumstance. Plus, the boy's got a good personality. I don't think they'll bite. Shame. Busy night? Nah, not really. A couple of drunks down the cock and bull, a parking offence and some yobs getting into a fight at the bus stop on Coventry Road. Oh, and an old lady who thought her purse had been stolen. Was it in her pocket? It was buried at the bottom of a handbag. Half of the course. Duller than watching paint dry. Uh, you just wait till you've had a few bad nights. Then you'll be glad of an old lady in a missing purse. Hmm. CSI Miami, this is not. Is that why you joined the force? I suppose it was... Dixon of Doc Green back in your day. <laughs> I'm not quite that old, thank you, Tony. I must admit it was a factor, sir. Right. Well, I plan to sit here and read the Herald until the sun comes up. Thanks for waiting, Harold. No worries. I'll just go grab my stuff. What do you reckon, Tone? What? Him? He's all right. A bit cocky for his age. But there's worse people to be on with. We were all like that once. We'll grow into it. How's the missus? Oh, she's taken up pottery. The mantelpiece is rapidly collecting lots of useless little pot things. Don't be surprised if you get some from us for Christmas. Then you'd have to do me for possession, eh? Aye, very good. <laughs> good evening, sir. Can we help you, sir? Sir? I'd like to speak to an officer of the law. You're talking to two of them, sir. How can we help? I'd like to speak to an officer of the law. Uh, Tony, go and make us a cuppa. There's a good chap. Sir? Just you and me now, sir. How can I help? I'm afraid I've become a criminal officer. Really, sir? And what kind of criminal have you become? A murderer, sir. That's a very serious claim, Mr. Uh... What a vacuous thing to say. I'm sorry? Of course it's serious. We both know that murder is a serious crime. So why bother saying it? Very well, sir. Seeing as you're well aware of the severity of your alleged crime, perhaps you'd like to tell me who you've murdered. And now you're making unreasonable assumptions, officer. Do you really expect me to know the identity of my victim? Well, 80% of murder victims know their killers. Reasonable assumption to make. Now clearly yours falls into the 20% category. Clearly. What's your name? <sighs> Why did you do it? Okay, where did you do it? Where's the body? Now you're asking the right questions. I'll take you. Hang on. What's going on? You're under arrest on suspicion of murder. You do not have to say anything, but it may arm your defence if you do not mention when questioned something which you later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. Murder? Harold, how do you fancy a bit of overtime?
Where are we heading, sir? Just keep driving. You're doing the right thing by confessing, you know. Courts are a lot more lenient with people who hand themselves in and plead guilty, especially if the murder was committed in the heat of the moment, as it were. Play your cards right, you may only get ten years or so. Bigger boy inside and you'll be out in eight. Harold? Yes, sir? You're new, aren't you, Harold? What? Oh, uh, yes, sir. I've been in the force for three months now. It's all pretty quiet round here, to tell you the truth. Before you came in, we'd only had a few drunks to deal with all night. I went on a drug bus the other week, though. That was exciting. What do you do for a living, then? We see you, Brightman. We're not taxi drivers. We don't have to make polite conversation with detainees. Oh, sorry, sir. I suppose it's safe to assume, then, PC Brightman, that you've never seen someone with a slit throat. If we drive any further, we'll be a Leicestershire. Take the next left. Why did you do it? Harold. Why did I do what? Slit someone's throat. What else would I mean? Harold, we can't question a suspect informally in the back of a car like this. You know the rules. And so do I. I'm not questioning him, sir. I just want to know how someone could do something like that. I'm curious, that's all. Like, what snaps inside you for you to do something like that? What's going through your head? How do you justify it to yourself? That's enough, Harold. You've been watching too much television, PC Brightman. You see a documentary about a serial killer and spend the next week pondering the dualities of human nature. Grappling with the concept of evil. The juxtaposition of banality and brutality. Nature versus nurture. You come to some cynical conclusions. You say that anyone could be an inhuman monster if placed under just the right set of specific circumstances. Yet deep down, you don't believe that you yourself could ever commit such a heinous act. So, you read the stories, look at the mugshots and the grainy old pictures of smiling innocent victims, and try to imagine this person raping, torturing, slaughtering that person. And think about how they didn't know how that photo would be seen in years to come. Take the next right. So you think, if you could only take a glance into the mind of a murderer, you might just come to some kind of understanding. Am I right? Park up here on the left, officer. How much further is it, sir? When he's located the body, we'll cuff him and call an ambulance to come and collect it. Okay. You think he'll try anything? Nah, he handed himself in. He's under arrest. He's got nowhere to run. I wouldn't worry. Okay. How far do you think it'll be? I don't know, Harold. It'll be as far as it'll be. Something's not right here, Skipper. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Shh, Harold, it's fine. As he said, you've been watching too much TV. What if he left the murder weapon by the body? He could still be dangerous. Hmm. Well, I suppose there's no harm in being on the safe side. Sir, wait there, please. Sir, wait there. It's over here. Wait there, please. It's in the stitch. I can see it, sir. Red puffer jacket poking out from behind the rocks. Sir, wait there. Stand back from the body. Stay there, Harold. Be careful, sir. Sir? Stand back, both of you. May I remind you, sir, that you are under arrest? Thank you, officer. <laughs> I had almost forgotten. Uh, right. I said stand back, Brightman. Are you deaf as well as stupid? You, you've killed him, you bastard! It's okay, PC Brightman. You'll be over it soon. Are you going to kill me? Yes. 
Why? Come here. Oh, what? You'll shoot me? Come here. Why are you doing this? That's not even a body, is it? You weren't even a murderer. I am now. Stand back. Please, sir, I'll do whatever you want. You will indeed. On your knees. Good boy. <coughs> Why? Why are you doing this? You're asking the wrong questions, PC Brightman. <coughs> Who are you? Try again. <coughs> Please don't kill me. That's not a question. <coughs> Harold? Harold? <laughs> A shame. Hello, PC Collier. Good evening, PC Collier. I just wanted to inform you that I've deposited your station's car in a lay-by on the A508 between Kelmarsh and Great Oxida. Who's this? How did you get this number? I'm calling from the car radio, you moron. Hello? 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 This is PC Collier. I'm concerned for the welfare of PCs Roy Gorman and Harold Brightman. Well, we hope you enjoy that, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> Comment below uh, what you think of the play you just heard. Yeah, we uh, hope you enjoyed that. There you go. Um, that was Mystery Murder. Um, <laughs> we hope you enjoyed it. I think they enjoyed it. I hope so. <laughs> Smash that like button if you enjoyed it. So, uh, so yeah, there we go. Um, so, uh, Rob, how did you feel about playing a, a murderer? Uh, well, it's... Um... In 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 acting, I think it's it's important to um, take on a variety uh, of different characters um, because that's what uh, acting is all about: um, trying new things and playing characters that's uh, you know so far from uh, yourself. And this was like my first time playing like a bad villain type character. Um, and uh, I enjoyed the challenge. Um, it's, uh, you know, I think mostly some people think that it's just, it's just easy to play either a, a good character or a bad one. You know, I think possibly it's just, you know, it's just easy. But it's actually kind of difficult to, especially in an audio play, to sort of come across um, as if you're like an evil person. Um, so I hope I, uh, uh, portrayed that well. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's first time doing it. Um, I always try to take on, uh, new roles and, um, hopefully, um, I can do, uh, more evil characters in, in the future. Um, so yeah, I liked it. I'd, def I'd kind of describe your character as a very sociopathic person. Yeah. I think yeah. so, yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. So. because uh, you don't care for anyone's feelings. You don't care for the person. Mm. And that's... Yeah, he's he, yeah. He's, he's very uh, cool and collected kind of guy. Like, he sort of knows what he's doing. Yeah, um, that's true, yeah. So. Yeah, it was kind of uh, a little bit based off um, Robert. I don't know if uh, Damien and Steve, you remember reading uh, a play called Roberto Zuko a few years ago with Anne. It's a play that I don't even know if we read through it. I, I don't think we did actually. No, I don't think we did. No, 
I remember hearing it mentioned, but I don't remember reading it. Yeah, I think I bought a copy of it to read it. It's it's really good. I mean, it's really bloody heavy and um, really kind of, yeah, really nasty. Um, but it was slightly based off that because the character is uh, a serial killer and he's a, a psychopath. And one, I, I remember talking to Jacob about it because he'd done a bit of research into it and he, he said that... Um, uh, one of the traits of a sociopath or a psychopath is that they basically just live in the moment. They don't plan ahead or think about the ramifications of their actions. They just do things because they feel like it in the moment. Um, so it was a little bit based on on that, but as yet we don't know what the character's motivations <laughs> are. Um, mm. So I was actually going to ask, what, what do you think his motives are? But you've answered my question. <laughs> You'll have to wait. I must see. say, James, it was an interesting. Uh, it was an interesting uh, musical score you have there for the play. What made you choose that? <laughs> uh, I'm glad you asked. I um, I uh, I made the unusual choice to score the entire play for um, only bassoon and um, <laughs> <laughs> and gong. <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> I'm um, painting myself into a yeah. corner. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah. No, you don't have to answer something if you don't want. I'll just throw it in just to see what you'd say. <laughs> um, uh, what, what I was going to say was um, the reason I wanted Rob to play that character is because, partly because of uh, your character in Death Trap, Rob. Um, oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Um, where you did a bit of a kind of sinister thing. And also we did a scene yeah. a while ago in the podcast from... Uh, wait until dark. That's it. Where you played yes, the, yeah. a villain character, and I thought, hmm, who yeah. could we get to play a soft-spoken, scary villain as opposed to a yeah shouty, angry, aggressive villain? Yeah. So, and you did it very well. I was I was very happy with your performance. Oh, thank you for that comment. Um, I'm glad you liked it, and. Uh, yeah, I enjoyed doing it. Um, but just going back to Wait Until Dark, uh, I just read in for that. I just want to put out there that um, the character uh, that I was playing in that little clip, um, when when we were going to put it on um, live, um, originally it was Andy Littlefield that was going to play the character. Yes. Um, so I just want to put that out there. Um, and uh, Death Trap, um, you said I did a little cynical bit. Do you mean the the very last paragraph, like the big chunk? Yeah, right towards the end. I was thinking of. No, I mean I did uh, enjoy doing that. Um, so I guess that was maybe a little practice, uh, in a way. But it was, it was uh, a little bit bad timing because I couldn't speak. So. No. Yeah. Um, I'm glad you know with these uh, audio plays. Uh, I'm glad that I can I can speak to, to actually do them. <laughs> <laughs> I've got much to fall much else to fall back on if you can't speak in an audio play. Right? No, no, no. <laughs> I mean, not like it can mime, is it? You know. <laughs> I mean, you can, but nobody will see you. You know, nobody will see me. No, no. no. <laughs> well, there's there's actually quite a lot of um, pauses in in this script there's quite a lot of like pauses and and silences it's a bit sort of yeah. pintery mm. and um i think it's quite quite interesting having pauses and stuff like that in plays in audio plays because like it's almost kind of slightly jarring when nothing happens and it's only when the next line is delivered like there's a bit of tension when the next line is delivered the you kind of understand or like visualize what why there was a silence kind of thing yeah because uh as um as i mentioned it's my first time playing like an evil character i wasn't sure how i was going to play it um but uh you did help james when you said uh, at the beginning like what you imagine the character to be like and that did help so i kind of took um a little bit uh, I don't know if inspiration is the right word, but um, I, I, I took the inspiration from an actor called Carol, Carlos Bernard. No, Carlos Bernard. Uh, 
I think that's how you pronounce his name. Um, pro- probably best known for playing Tony Almeida in t- 24. Oh. Um, so like he, in, in 24, he's kind of like, um, he speaks very silently. Um, so I, <laughs> I personally call him the silent talker. Um, <laughs> so I kind of took a little bit of inspiration from him. Um, and like try to make it sound evil and and a bit creepy and stuff. So um, I hope that came across. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, uh, I must say it was a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun writing a character like that as well. So I look forward to doing more of that in the future. <laughs> um, cool. And mm. we also had uh, Stephen and Damien as police officers and. Um, Surprise, surprise from me. <laughs> you are very good at playing uh, at police officers. So, um, yeah. You can you can add that to your list now, Steve. PC. Yeah, another one. Uh, Gorman. Roy Gorman. PC Gorman? Gorman, oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I forgot which policeman was you, you are. Have I ever told you how I come up with uh, character names? Uh, no. no, you have not. When I need to name a character that's um, uh, has like a kind of normal sounding name, um, rather than trying to think of one, what I do is I have uh, I have a book called the Doctor Who Episode Guide, and it has it lists uh, every Doctor Who story ever and the cast. So what I do is I open it up on a random page, and like look at the cast list for whatever random episode it is, and go okay, uh, male name, male name, that one. And then I go to a different page and I go, okay, surname, 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 that one. So, uh, you basically just done a makeshift random name generator. Yeah. Sounds that way. Mm-hmm. Pretty much. Like, so I think for the, I, Bruno Dallas, I, I said that I made that name up, but the other ones were just kind of generated from the book. So for instance, um, Gorman, the surname of, uh, Stephen's character, uh, yeah. was named from Pat Gorman, who, uh, interestingly, played 73 roles in Doctor Who, ranking number seven in terms of appearing in the oh. most serials. And they're all oh. like small roles. They're so like the invasion as a Cyberman, the war games as a military policeman, as a Silurian, as a prime ward, as an Auton leader, as a unit corporal, as a soldier, etc. And yeah, like tons of different things. Mm. Yeah. So yeah. Cool. Mm. And he died in 2018. Rest in peace, Pat Gorman. Oh. Yeah, there you go. Yes. It's funny that we um, we're talking about acting and then talking about Doctor Who because didn't you recently um, do a thing? Was it an audio play version of Doctor Who with someone? Me. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I did. Uh, that was back in the summer. Do you want to? Do you want? Are you going to do a shameful plug with it, James? <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't that the shameful plug you did last time? No, no, that was a different project. Oh, was it? Oh. Yeah, that was uh, that's for the Russian one. I did a Doctor Who audio play, uh, audio drama on YouTube with a guy called Miles Taylor who does Doctor Who YouTube videos, and uh, it was called Starstruck, mm. and it was uh, a story about the Doctor and the companion land on this planet which is like a kind of hollywood film studio where they're making this long running uh basically like a knockoff of doctor who called professor watt and um <laughs> uh, and the okay. the doctor is uh uh annoyed that he he thinks they've stolen his whole thing uh so it's quite fun and i played a kind of very agitated uh tv director um who was on a limited time and budget and kept getting interrupted. Hmm. Very, uh, very limited. Uh, uh, very, uh, that sounds like you, really. Just very much sounds like you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was It was kind of funny because uh, it wasn't, it was recorded separately, but it wasn't even like how we do it here where you've got someone reading in. It was literally, here's the script, record your line, send it in. Um. Oh. Which I did, and I think I had like one line that he said, "Oh, can you do this line slightly differently?" Um, 
So it was, when you listen to it, you are literally listening to an entire cast of people not even talking to anyone else other than themselves reading off a script. So it's, it's, it works like better than you think. Cool. Interesting. uh, I guess we'll put link to that in the description. Steve, my question to you is, uh, well, in the Mystery Murder play that uh, we have just listened to, um, you, of course, played another uh, police officer. Um, so I'm just wondering, uh, did you take any inspiration from any of the previous uh, police officers that you've played in the past? Um, no, not really. It was just another place one for the repertoire, really. Yeah. <laughs> another one added to the list. Yeah, I just sort of played him as a, a typical policeman. Or that's my that was what yeah. I attempted to do, you know. Yeah, when you were reading the lines and so the uh, uh, the accent that you did, it reminded me of um, the uh, uh, detectives in, I think the TV sh- show is called New Tricks. Oh yes, um, you yeah, yeah. reminded like me of them. So yeah, hang on. I reminded you of the retired policeman who discovered who who uh, look into cold cases. Thanks. No, 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 no. <laughs> you, you, you didn't. You didn't. You didn't. You didn't remind me of any specific person from that show. You just reminded me of that show. Fair enough. Um, Works for me. I like that because show. I it's think, good show. Yeah, because I think they. Um, that's what their accents are, is, is it? Um, yeah, I think they're similar ones. Yeah, similar. Yeah, yeah. 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 So I don't know. You just reminded me of that show. So yeah, that's cool. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take that. <laughs> it's a very kind of uh, Bobby on the beat kind of fairly traditional kind of police officer, isn't it? That kind of yeah. Hello, hello. What's yeah. all this then? Kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. PC right. plot. Yeah, <laughs> it's actually nice to play a policeman with an actual name this time, rather <laughs> than, to rather than PC be, pincher. rather or or PC policeman. <laughs> PC policeman. <laughs> yep. I've had that. Oh <laughs> uh, well, now you know how all those uh, uh, Indian actors feel when they get cast in um, yet another British TV show where they play um, <laughs> Mr. Khan. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, what's it going to be this week? Um, uh, strict father or corner shop owner? Um, <laughs> oh, maybe I'll get to play a consultant this week. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, shall we do the quiz? Yeah. Yes. And uh, now it's time for this week's quiz. And this week, Damien is doing the questions. So I'll hand you over to Damien. Uh, yes, for the quiz, I decided that I'm going to do something a bit different than usual. In my mind, I was, pl- I was thinking, do something to do with murder mystery. And then I thought, what is in murder mysteries? Riddles, sometimes. <laughs> and um, so I went and found some of my favourite favorite riddles online, which cool. is actually from um, from The Hobbit. Oh, really? If anyone, if anyone knows okay. what The Hobbit is. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Very, very long films. But not yeah. as long as Lord of the Rings, those. Those, those are like three oh, yes. and a half hours. <laughs> four, four and a half hours, I think, the longest one is. <laughs> so... I remember when I was in school and uh, in primary school, and um, the teacher was reading The Hobbit to us, and um, yeah, it was read over many, many days. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, riddle number one: What has roots that nobody sees? Is taller than the trees. Up, up it goes, and yet never grows. Riddle number two. Voiceless it cries, wingless flutters, toothless bites, mouthless mutters. Ready for riddle number three, or are you still thinking? It cannot be seen, cannot be felt, cannot be heard, cannot be smelt. It lies behind stars and under hills, and empties holes it fills. It comes out and follows after, ends life, kills laughter. Riddle number four. 
alive without breath, as cold as death, never thirsty, ever drinking, all in mail, never clinking. Shall I say the last riddle then, guys? Yeah, go on. Yeah. This thing, all things devours, birds, beasts, trees, flowers, gnaws iron, bites steel, grinds hard stones to meal. Slays king, ruins that town, and beats mountains down. So, question uh, riddle one, which is what says roots that nobody sees is taller than trees, up up it goes, and yet never grows, is mountain. Oh, uh, yeah, I didn't get that one. <laughs> Voiceless it cries, wingless flutters, teethless bites, mouthless mutters. I'd say that one is the hardest one, to be fair. And that is wind. Yeah, I didn't get that one either. <sighs> okay, did get that one. Yeah. You did get it. You did. Oh. Yeah. You didn't sound too sure then, James. <laughs> Are you cheating? <laughs> well, no, I thought, what have you I got thought of it as you were saying it the second time it occurred to me. So I, I, off camera. Riddle number three is I cannot be seen, cannot be felt, cannot be heard, cannot be smelt. Lies behind stars and under hills. And empty holes it fills. It comes out first and follows after. Ends life kills laughter. And that is dark or darkness. Yeah, I put darkness. Yeah, darkness. That would be all right. Yay. Yeah. Riddle number four. Alive without breath is called death. Never thirsty, ever drinking. All in male, never clinking is fish. Oh. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> never thirsty, always drinking. Of course it is. And the last riddle is this thing all things devours, birds, beasts, trees, flowers, nor's iron bites steel, grants hard stones to meal, slays king, ruins town, all, and beats mountain down is time. Yeah. Oh. I didn't get that one. So, rally up your points, and I think I know who's the big loser. <laughs> rally up your points. Rally up your points, <laughs> rally them all together. <laughs> <laughs> I just realised as well. All right. All right, what's everyone's points then? I got two. Rob, I uh, no, Steve, you go first. I insist you go first. <laughs> I only got one. <laughs> oh, I am surprised. Like, I'm, I'm very like surprised at myself here, you know. But I got. A grand total of zero. <laughs> and you know so what you know what that means, what that means, means that boys means. and girls. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to say it myself. Once again, I am this episode's big loser. But one day, guys, I will surprise you. And I will... I One, one of these quizzes, I'm going to get more marks than any of you, you know, you just, you just wait, you just wait, the day, the, the day quiz. is coming, yeah, <laughs> Bing bong. and that sound means that it is once again the end of the episode, as always, we hope you enjoy, uh, if you did, then you know what to do, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and comment down below telling us what you think and uh, your thoughts on the Mystery Murder audio play. And if you are listening on any other platform, then please hit that follow button. And as always, this podcast is available on most streaming platforms. Why not check us out on the What's Past is podcast anchor page? And don't forget to check out the links in the description for our other channels and websites. And on that note, it's bye from me. It's a toodle pipperino from me. <laughs> and it's a tata from me. And to play us out, here's a piece of music that I wrote for an Anvil murder mystery a few years ago. Uh, it was set in the 20s and it was a uh, Charleston. So here it is. It's called Charleston. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a it's a, a big toodly pip 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 from me until next time. <laughs> Goodbye.